Good morning. It is 10 o'clock. I am Monica De Vigilis and pursuant to Article 11.2 of the bylaws, as chairwoman of the board of directors of SNAM SPA, I serve as chair of today's AGM and declare the meeting open. I invite notary Carlo Marchetti to serve as secretary. I inform you that the company is availing itself of the authority granted by Article 107, Paragraph 4 of Law Decree of March 17, 2020, Number 18, uh, whose effectiveness has been extended to the AGM meetings to be held within July 31st, 2023, by Article 3, Paragraph 10, and this is of Decree Law Number 198 of December 29, 2022, urgent provisions on legislative deadlines and amended by law number 14 uh, providing the attendance at the AGM meeting by those entitled to vote and the exercise of voting rights may take place exclusively through the representative designated by the company pursuant to Article 135 and this is of law decree 28 of February 24 1998 UF. I inform you that the company has designated Studio Legale Trevisan and Associati in the person of Dr. Mario Trevisan, Dario Trevisan as the designated representative whom the entitled parties conferred a proxy and or a sub-delegation with voting instruction on all or some of the items on the agenda. Um, the attendance at the shareholders meeting by those eligible to vote may also take place by means of telecommunication devices that allow for their identifications. In compliance with current regulation, regulations, the notice of shareholders meeting was published in full on the company website on April 3rd, 2023, and ex excerpt was published in the daily newspaper Solo 24 Rose and the English language version in the Financial Times on April 4, 2023. The agenda is as follows. Financial statements as of December 31st, 2022 of the MSPA, consolidated financial statements as of December 31st, 2022 reports by the directors, the board of statutory auditors and the independent auditors, relevant and consequent resolutions, two, allocation of profit for the year and distribution of dividend, three, authorization to purchase and dispose of treasury shares subject to revocation of the authorization granted by the uh, uh, AGM of April 27, 2022, for the part not yet implemented. Relevant and consequent resolutions. Four, long term stock incentive plan 2023 2025. Relevant and consequent resolutions. Five, report and remuneration policy and compensation paid in 2023. 5.1, first section, remuneration policy report, binding resolution. 5.2, second session, report and compensation paid, non-binding resolution. In addition to the undersigned, Stefano Venier, CEO, and the directors, Massimo Bergami, Laura Cavatorta, Augusta Iannini, Pietro Manzoni, and Rita Rolli have taken the floor. In addition to Stefano Gnocchi, Chairman of the Board of Statutory Auditors, and Statutory Auditors Gianfranco Chinellato and Ines Gandini. Excuse the absentees, Directors Quinn Jin Shen and Alessandro Tonetti. I would like to inform that those entitled to participate in today's AGM are connected by telecommunication devices that allow for their identification. And I confirm that I have personally ascertained the identity and legitimacy of those present, as well as the effective right of all to take part in the debate and the voting sessions. I uh, inform you that the share capital is uh, uh, 2,735,670,475.56, divided into 3,360,857,899 shares with no par values. I hereby announce that there are duly represented at the meeting exclusively through the designated representative 
1,998 shareholders represented 2,539,359,604 ordinary shares equal to 75.56% of the share capital with voting rights. Number of uh, proxies, 1,997, and uh, sub-delegation uh, pursuant to Article 135 uh, TUF, and two proxies pursuant to Article 135, and this is, have been granted to the designated representative. I invite Professor Macchetti to provide the necessary information to declare today AGM duly constituted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to give you some preliminary information. Pursuant to Article 1215 of the EU ruling, I would like to inform you that personal info name, first and last name, uh, place of birth, uh, and the professional qualifications uh, have been recorded based on the law in force. Uh, they will be included in the minutes of the meeting and could be disseminated also outside Europe uh, in the manner and limits set by the law in force. The list of those entitled to participate through proxy or subdelegation with indication of the number of shares held by each one of them will be attached to the minutes of the AGM. I would like to inform you that uh, there is a, a recording uh, will be um, made to streamline uh, the minute taking operations, that simultaneous interpreting will be provided and the registration is available on the internet uh, site of the company. And then I would like to inform you that, as recommended by CONCEP, qualified financial analysts, repressed and experts will follow the works of the AGM through the recording. I would also like to inform you that a bureau has been established and that Uberto Baldi and Stefano Sperzaghi sit in the board. I would like to inform you that, according to the rules laid down by the Civil Code, all the formalities have been complied with. And then I would like to inform you that uh, voting will be carried out through the uh, designated representative, and uh, he will also inform us of all those who would like to make um, recommendations or remarks. Based uh, on the powers granted uh, by me to article by articles 2000. Uh, 371 of the Civil Code, Article 11 of the Bylaws, and Article 5 of the Regulations for the AGM, uh, that this AGM is duly constituted in ordinary session to decide and resolve on the items of the agenda. I inform that no request has been received by the company to supplement the agenda and submit the resolutions pursuant to the law and Articles 1 to 6. It has been verified on the basis of the circumstances known to the company and the statement of those attending that the attendees are eligible to vote. I request the appointed representative to notify, pursuant to the provisions of law, regulation in force and the company's bylaws, the presence of uh, uh, anyone not holding uh, legitimacy to vote or uh, being excluded from vote voting, as well as the existence of any shareholders agreement, and this for all voting sessions. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I declare that uh, there is no one not entitled to vote or that can be excluded from voting pursuant to the provisions of law, regulations in force and the articles of association in relation to all voting um, sessions. Uh, I declare that I have no reports concerning the existence of any shareholders agreement without prejudice to the shareholders agreement pursuant to Article 1 to 2 of the TUF and Article 1 3 uh, zero of the regulations adopted by the Council of Revolution, uh, Resolution published in accordance with the law and currently in force between Casa Deposit Impressity on the one hand and the State Grid uh, Europe Limited and State Grid International Development Limited. I note that there are no further reports on this matter. 
there being no further reports on this specific matter, I invite Professor Macchetti to provide additional information for the conduct of the current AGM. As of April 24, 2023, the company holds 8,101,437 treasury shares, represented not 0.241% of the share capital. The company holds no additional treasury shares in the portfolio, not even through its subsidiaries. Pursuant to Article 2357 ter, uh, treasury shares have uh, accounted for the purpose of calculating the quorum to uh, constitute to, for the constitution of the quorum. That being said, three billion three hundred and twenty uh, and fifty-two million seven hundred and fifty-six three hundred and seventy-two ordinary shares are entitled to vote according to the shareholders register as of April twenty-fourth, and based on the information received, the shareholder who directly or indirectly holds shares with voting rights representing more than three percent are. CDP Reti, 31.352%, uh, Romano Minotti, 7.460%, Lazarda Asset Management, 4.4961%. Uh, pursuant to Article 120, those who hold significant stakes in the company, uh, pursuant with the applicable law and regulation, must notify the company and concept. In the event of missing notification, voting rights may not be exercised uh, with the designated representative therefore being requested on behalf of any eligible person falling under this condition to make this known for all voting sessions. The company is aware of the shareholders' agreement previously indicated by the designated representative between CPT Retis Passet Grid European Limited and State Grid International Development Limited, also concerning SAM, pursuant to Article 122. I would like to inform you that in relation to the right to ask questions pursuant to Article 127, some questions were received prior to the AGM. Uh, from Mark Bava and Record Common APS in according with the procedures indicated in the notice of meeting. As required the, by the aforementioned regulations and the notice of call, a special file containing the relevant answers has already been published on May 2nd, 2023 on the company website in the question and answer format. I hereby invite the designated representative to indicate for each individual voting session the number of shares for which he uh, did not intend to participate in the vote in the light of the failure to give voting instruction, as well as to make the declaration required by the applicable regulations in the event that he um, uh, would vote differently from the instruction received. I inform that Studio Legale Trevisan Associati, as designated representative, has declared that it has complied with the confidentiality duty imposed on the designated representative by the concept communication number 3, 2020 of April 10, 2020. Before moving on to the discussion of the items of the agenda, I would like to inform you that uh, the reports of the Board of Directors with the uh, motion for resolutions have been filed at the company's registered office and made available to the public on the company's website and at the authorized storage mechanism is storage within the terms of law and have been sent to those who have requested them. I announce that uh, taking into account the peculiar manner in which this AGM is being held, in which remarks by those entitled to attend are permitted by law exclusively through the designated representative, uh, the chair uh, requires that uh, voting on each item on the agenda will take place after the conclusion of the debate on the items of the agenda uh, according to Article 8.1 of the SNAM uh, AGM regulations. Um, if the designated representative has no objection, I recommend to deal item with item number one and two on the agenda jointly. Voting will be held separately for each item on the agenda. I also recommend, if the designated representative has no objection, that for all items on the agenda, uh, the reading of the aforementioned documents be omitted. However, a brief introduction of the topic will be provided where appropriate, and the proposed resolution will be read. Thank you. 
uh, I do not object to the motion submitted by the chairman. I move on to item number one and two on the agenda. Uh, point, item number one, financial statements as of December 31st, 2022, uh, and uh, consolidated financial statement as of December 31st, 2022, reports of the directors, uh, the board of audit, statutory auditors, and independent directors, relevant and consequent resolutions to allocation of profit for the year and distribution of dividend. I also invite Professor Marchetti to give some uh, information concerning the formalities to be fulfilled uh, and uh, to provide info on the documentation concerning financial uh, docu uh, statements and the activities of the auditing committee. I inform you that the file containing the financial statements of SNAM as of December 31st, 2022, the consolidated financial statement, the director's reports and operations, the reports by the board of statutory auditors and independent directors, as well as the board of directors' motions uh, submitted to the uh, AGM, uh, has been filed at the company's registered office and made available to the public on the company's website and the authorized storage mechanism in market storage. And uh, uh, the documents have been sent to those who required them. I now move on to uh, the uh, letter to the uh, shareholders that has been published also on our website. Dear shareholder, 2022 was a watershed year for the global energy system, which had to cope with the geopolitical, economic and social consequences of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The ongoing war has completely reshaped the priorities of the energy sector, which had already been under strain in the previous months due to the structural reduction of investments and the negative events in the European electricity sector. The gradual decline in the flow of Russian sourced natural gas to Europe has brought general attention back to the issue of security of supply. Uh, in a way that has not happened since the energy crisis of the 70s and the 80s. The center of gravity of the entire Italian energy system was reversed. Shifting towards the Mediterranean area, gas volumes transported from north to south fell by 31% year on year, <clears throat> while imports from the southern routes grew by 15%. In the meantime, the quantities of LNG from the US, Africa and the Middle East stored by 46%. A complex scenario which SNAM was able to tackle effectively and quickly. In full harmony with the measures taken by the government and thanks to our tangible and intangible assets, we responded to the short-term crisis in real time while still managing not to lose sight of the objectives of working towards building a more resilient energy system geared towards the energy transition. The hourglass of glass flow was overturned and SNAM accompanied this change of direction while preventing any disturbance to the system. We acted along all lines of our business. The actions implemented in storage with last resort filling started since last summer. Counterflow storage, intraday auctions and services to optimize available capacity made it possible, on the one hand, to start the winter delivery phase with greater than 95% filling, and on the other, to preserve the gas stored with quantities that will have a positive effect on the next filling campaign and on prices in the months to come. We quickly purchased and will soon make two new regasifiers ships available to the country, each with a capacity of 5 million cubic meters per year. Both have completed the authorization process and the first will be operating starting in May 2023. Looking ahead, the LNG contribution to meeting domestic demand could rise from the current 20 to 40 percent, thereby ensuring higher levels of flexibility and security and offering new opportunities to emerging areas of the Mediterranean. 
Also thanks to these lines of development and the presence abroad, we can continue to strengthen our unique position in Europe as an integrated TSO across the entire value chain from transportation to storage to LNG, with assets strategically located along the key corridors for natural gas and in perspective for hydrogen. North, West and more recently South after the conclusion of the purchase of the shares of the gas pipelines from Algeria in January 2023. Building a more resilient energy system in a time of great volatility and uncertainty was only the first step in our strategy, geared towards uh, the goal of carbon neutrality. We have consolidated our commitment in energy transition by acting as enablers of new technological solutions for decarbonization. We have increased our presence in biomethane and with bioenergies. We have continued to invest in energy efficiency and sign agreements with the public administration with Renovit. In a joint venture with ENI, we have launched the first Italian carbon capture and storage project. The Memorandum of Understanding concluded with Edison for the development of small-scale LNG business goes in the direction of decarbonization, land, sea and rail transport. Our commitment to innovation and for new technologies continues with the Snaminova and high accelerator programs, the latter dedicated to technologies for hydrogen development and decarbonization. In short, Today's NAM is a company with a clear strategic development path ahead, capable of rebalancing the energy trilemma, security, competitiveness, sustainability of supplies, called into question by the events of recent years. The direction to follow has been outlined and uh, indicated both in the 2022-26 strategic plan of last January and in our vision to 2030. Infrastructure development, all with a view to H2 readiness, decarbonization through green gases, hydrogen and biomethane, CCS and energy efficiency, digitalization and optimization of assets and industrial processes. Three guidelines on which we have planned 10 billion euros investment over the plan period. In the same period, while maintaining financial soundness, SNAM expects significant growth in key performance indicators with an average annual growth by 7% in EBITDA and 3% in net profit. While the weight of sustainable finance is expected to increase, to increase from 70% achieved at the year end to 80% in 2026. Even in an uncertain scenario, the financial results for 2022 demonstrate the group soundness and make it possible to propose a unit dividend of 0.2751 euros, of which 0.11 euros have already been distributed as an interim payment to the, to the AGM on May 4th, confirming a shareholders' remuneration policy that is not only attractive but also sustainable over time. SNAP commitments for carbon neutrality targets by 2040 remains unchanged, despite the current challenging context. Changes in the industrial setup and changes in gas transportation flows have had and will have an impact on emissions. However, countermeasures have already been taken in the past year and they will be a fruit in the medium to long term. The plan to replace compressor stations with dual fuel gas electricity solutions was updated. Uh, steps to reduce methane emissions minus 45% in 2022 compared to 2015 beyond plan targets at UNEP, United Nations Environment Programme, objectives will continue. In line with the goal of a just transition, we have also refocused our efforts for social sustainability put at risk by the long wave of the pandemic and the impact of the energy crisis on the most exposed uh, sections of society. With the SNAM Foundation, we have redesigned our areas of intervention, focusing on combating three kinds of poverty, energy, education, 
and food poverty, with initiatives targeted at territories, particularly those where our industrial activity is particularly strong. The decarbonization of the energy system is a multi-level interconnected processes on three levels, geographic, timing, investment, as well as prices, technologies and geopolitical factors. For this very reason, energy transition is not a linear path and the events of recent months have shown it. If we anticipate and govern this framework, we can show that we can play a leading role in the ongoing process and we are capable of building a security corridor for the country and our stakeholders. Thanks to our assets and the skills of our people, we are ready to seize all opportunities to consolidate and develop our globally recognized leadership in the energy sector. Thank you. And I invite our CEO to illustrate the highlights of the financial year 2022. Thank you. Thank you and good morning to all of you on my side, uh, dear shareholders. Uh, 2022 has achieved uh, solid uh, results, as was mentioned a moment ago, and further strengthening, most especially of our strategic position, knowing that uh, in order to give to the country such infrastructures as can guarantee full energy security has just begun. Like it was said in the letter to the stakeholders over the last 12 months, we've had an extremely volatile scenario that has introduced profound changes in the energy markets, as well as in the national system, imposing upon us the need to react swiftly and effectively to ensure the availability of gas immediately and build the elements that we make it possible in the midterm. We have achieved solid economic and financial results and at the same time we made investments 50% more versus the previous year, mostly in line with the European taxonomy and the SDGs. In 2022 we've also uh, achieved uh, good progress on the main operational KPIs and ESG elements in gas infrastructure and in the energy trans transition infrastructure. As you can see on the slide now, I'm giving you a brief overview of the consolidated financial results. In terms of adjusted EBITDA, this result is down 0.6% over 21 because the impact of the review of the return reorganized on the regulated activities applied at the beginning of the year has reduced this by over 130 million euros, which was broadly offset by the better results on the outward-based activities and regulated revenues and the contribution of the business of the energy transition 24 million euros uh, up uh, by 15 million uh, over the previous year. If we drill down to the adjusted uh, net income, this was 1 billion 163 million euros, which makes it possible to confirm the dividend policy with a proposal of dividend per share of 0.2751 euros of which uh, 0.11 already distributed um, on account in January and uh, 0.1651 in June. The dividend per share is therefore 5% uh, higher uh, of the previous year. Let's go back to the investments for a moment. As said, including the acquisition of the first regasifying ship, Golar Tundra, that will uh, come on stream in January, as mentioned a moment ago, and that required an investment of 329 million euros. The total of these investments is up 50% uh, uh, year over year, uh, close to 2 billion euros. As a result of this, the capital and invested subject to regulation is 21.4 billion euros and here again up by 2% over 2021 and finally indebtedness. Uh, this has gone down a lot, 11 billion, 900 million, mainly because of a temporary positive effect on the working capital relating to the balancing of the system that took place in Q4 22 
when the market was subject to too broad availability because of mild weather and the measures taken to save gas. Let's move on to some business operational KPIs as shown on page three relating to our gas infrastructures as well as to the energy transition activities. Well, 22 was a demanding year in operational terms. We've had to tackle an unprecedented inversion of gas flows, injecting over 4 billion more cubic meters in the storage facilities compared to the previous year, most especially managing at the same time a lesser foreseeability of gas flows. This has entailed an increase by over 20% of the hours of operation of our compression stations. As was mentioned, uh, the LNG plants were managed uh, uh, next to full annual capacity, providing the necessary flexibility of the sources to offset uh, the decrease in the uh, supply from Russia. On top of that, should be reminded that Italy contributed to sourcing the European system with uh, approximately 4.6 billion cubic meters exported, mainly through Austria, i.e. through the pipelines of the Inbase T company TIG that is based in Austria. Moving on to the energy transition businesses. First, we've hit 40 megawatts of installed capacity of biomethane biogas with 19 million cubic meters produced well above the previous year. Renovit, i.e. the operational company that deals with energy efficiency activities, has achieved 46 megawatts of installed capacity in photovoltaic and coal generation. The less mature businesses like uh, small-scale energy, sustainable mobility and decarbonization projects have obtained over 35 million euros grants uh, given uh, to SNAM and over 175 million euros of uh, grant contributions and grants to consortia of which SNAM is a member. In June 22, the listing of Denora was a success, and this more than doubled the value of the holding in the hands of SNAM as regards emissions, the change of transportation flows of gas and their management have had an implication on our scope one and two emissions. However, with respect to the regulated activities, these were down 0.6% over 2021 in the main, thanks to the significant reduction of methane emissions. We have also completed an in-depth analysis on the investments of 2022 that indicates an alignment of 39% to the European taxonomy and 62% to the SDGs. And finally, we continue to be rated by many ESG agencies with outstanding results, and I'm happy to tell you that we are the best performers for sustainalytics in the field of the gas utilities. We move on now to page four. On top of our financial operation results, I'd like to comment on some of the strategic milestones that we have reached in 2022 on the three legs of the energy tree lemma. And these are important stages of our long-term strategy. Starting from the security of sourcing, we have purchased and authorized in record times two new FSRU, i.e. floating chips, uh, that do regasification, each with an annual capacity of 5 billion cubic meters. As was mentioned a moment ago, the Golar Tundra, the first of these two ships, has arrived in Piombino and will start operation in this month. And uh, uh, this was uh, expected according to the initial timeline. Second point, uh, levels of storage at the beginning of the season, 95% uh, of the available um, capacity well above the previous year and well above the level established by the European community during uh, the planning of the actions to counter the situation resulting from uh, the Ukraine war. In January 23, we closed the acquisition from ANIA of a holding of 49.9% of the companies that manage the two pipelines uh, that connect Algeria and Italy, TTPC and, T and TMPC. On top of sustainability, the requests have been sent uh, for recognizing the 
projects relating to the development of, and capture of CO2 and the uh, facilities uh, uh, H2 backbone which are two community interest projects because they don't only relate to the activities of SNAM, but rather they also benefit a number of entities that derive benefits from these activities. The regulator has approved the so-called asset held methodology and its uh, mechanism for remunerating uh, amortized assets uh, to reward uh, the lengthening of the useful life of these assets, including for the benefit of the rates paid by the citizens. In 2022, we've uh, moved on further with respect to the analysis of the H2 readiness of our infrastructure, and uh, RINA, the independent party certified, is hydrogen ready 750 kilometers of the transport network and in November we've successfully tested a mix containing up to 10% of hydrogen in our Strana compression plant and at the same time we've uh, conducted tests on the storage sites with very promising results. And all of that has been done in a challenging volatile scenario with the declining gas demand by 10% year over year, and one uh, of the main uh, annual declines in history. And the average price of gas, uh, as compared to the TTF, uh, the Dutch hub, is 2.5 times higher compared to the one recorded on average in 2021. As regards the macroeconomic situation, we've uh, uh, started uh, an interest rate hike cycle with inflation and our reference parameter is above 4%. And our regulatory framework, however, offers protection vis-à-vis -vis the rate hike cycles, uh, even though with some delay. In 2023, there was no change in the regulated return as recognized by the regulator, but we expect uh, a, an increase in 2024 as a result of the effects measured in 2022, and that in any case we have represented also during the presentation of our business plan at the Capital Market Day in January this year. If we analyze in more detail the evolution of the gas demand on page 5, you can see that uh, the decline of 10% has uh, uh, been caused by a decrease in uh, residential consumption by 15.5%, uh, mainly due to a decrease in the consumption uh, in Q4 due to milder weather as well as to the measures taken to curb demand, as well as to the effects of the energy efficiency actions taken in the individual buildings. A decrease in industrial demand was recorded 13%, and this was due to high gas prices, as well as to the switch to other types of fuel decided by the companies. The third main category, that is the consumption for the production of electricity, has uh, declined, but less, slightly less so, 3% roughly, which is due to the replacement of the gas consumption with other fossil sources uh, for the thermal electric uh, consumption, and these solutions were taken to counter and curb the gas demand. And measures were also taken to minimize consumption in relation to the use of coal. The majority of the annual consumption, as you can see, is not structural because this is due to the weather conditions, uh, 2 billion cubic meters, and then demand uh, decrease and replacement vis-a-vis uh, -vis coal. Uh, the, uh, remaining amount is due to structural uh, elements uh, and the injection of gas 75.4 cubic meters was essentially in line with the previous year because uh, the declining demand uh, or 8 uh, cubic billion cubic meters uh, was uh, set off uh, by more injection and increase in exports by about 3 billion cubic meters 
Let us now move on to the flows. In 2022, we've had to tackle an unprecedented inversion. The flows from the north were down 30%. Mostly for the reduction of the Russian flows from Tarvisio, partially offset by high volumes coming in through the entry point of Paso Gries. The imports from the southern routes went up by 15% in this case, mostly as a result of the higher volumes relating to the supplies from Algeria and Azerbaijan. Instead, the uh, liquefied natural gas was fully used with resulting increase by about 45% annually. However, Italy can capitalize on five pipelines from different gas sources, three LNG terminals, uh, with two more coming uh, with the two floating ships, and so it can play a strategic role in the evolution of the European energy system, most especially in relation to its higher security. On page seven, you can see the situation and the evolution of the gas storage plants that have turned out to be strategic, not only for energy security, but as we've heard a moment ago, most especially in recent months, also, with respect to the price dynamics. They were full uh, to the extent of 60% of capacity, including the strategic reserves at the end of February. Well, uh, below 40% uh, of last year and the average of the last five years. We managed to obtain this result thanks to the initial filling and the reverse flow activity that has led to uh, the signing of contracts uh, to the extent of 0.5 billion in January and an additional billion cubic meters in March alone, and quite obviously uh, a declining demand due to mild weather. Currently, we are well above 11 billion cubic meters, including the strategic component equal to approximately 65% of the available capacity, and this is an excellent starting point for the upcoming season of injection that started on April 1st, not only in terms of volumes, but also, like I said a moment ago, with respect to the expected price evolution. To conclude, in 2022, we've operated in an extremely volatile context in terms of energy market, but also in terms of macroeconomy. Having said that, though, we managed to achieve solid financial results, even if it was the year during which the revision downwards of the remuneration of regulated infrastructures and activities occurred. We've also improved the KPIs and performance indicators relating to the gas infrastructure, as well as our uh, energy transition activities. And at the same time, we have also improved our performances and metrics uh, relating to ESG, the strategic objectives achieved on the three pillars paved the way for our long-term strategy, which, like I said before, uh, we have already uh, presented in January. And finally, we believe that SNAM continues to offer a satisfactory remuneration to each shareholders. So thank you for your attention. And now the floor goes back to the chairperson. Thank you, Stefano Venier. And I would like to refer to the conclusion you find in the report of the Board of Statutory Auditors to the Shareholders Committee pursuant to Article 153 of the TUF and Article 2429 of the Civil Code and the final part of the Independent Auditors' Report and the Financial Statements for the year ended December 31st, 2022, published pursuant to the law. I ask Professor Marchetti, Marchetti to read uh, the uh, Board of Directors' motions for resolution on item one and two on the agenda of today, AGM, and uh, to uh, the uh, declarations made through the designated representative. 
Uh, dear shareholders, you are invited to approve the financial statements as of December 31st, 2022, which closes with a profit of 696,926,272.04 euros. For the allocation of profit for the year and distribution of dividend, uh, shareholders are invited to allocate the operating profit of 328,123,000, not 71.12, remaining after the distribution of the interim di dividend for the fiscal year 2022 of Euro, not 0.11 per share, resolved by the Board of Directors on November 9, 2022, as follows. To the shareholders by way of dividend of not 0.1651, Euro per shares, for shares that will be outstanding on the ex-dividend date, except for treasury shares held in the portfolio on that date, as the balance of the interim dividend using the uh, retained earnings available, to pay the balance of the dividend of 0.1651 euros uh, per share as of uh, June 21st, 2023, with ex-dividend date on June 19, 2023, and record date June 20, 2023. I have the designated representative, if there are any remarks by the shareholders on the items one and two on the agenda, and any possible um, questions will be answered at, after the debate on the items of the agenda. Uh, thank you. I declare that no remarks, questions, or recommendations have been made by the entitled person represented by me on items one and two of the agenda of the AGM, except for a statement of vote by shareholder Carlo Maria Braghiero, who is entitled to vote at the AGM for 4,000 ordinary shares, which I hand over to the notary public to be attached in the meeting. Since there are no remarks on item number one on two, I move on to the discussion of item number three on the agenda. So, authorization to purchase and dispose of treasury shares subject to the revocation of the authorization granted by the AGM of April 27, 2022 for the part not yet implemented the relevant and consequent resolution. Since the 18-month period for the authorization to uh, purchase resolved by the AGM of April 27, 2022 will soon expire, and the uh, Board of Directors recommends that the AGM renew the authorization to purchase and dispose of own shares for an additional period of 18 months for the purposes, on the terms, and in the manner set forth in the Board of Directors' explanatory report on the agenda. I therefore invite Professor Marchetti to read, with the approval of the designated representative, the Board of Directors' motion for resolution on item 3 on the agenda of today AGM and to carry out the stake, uh, shareholders' intervention through the designated representative, uh, Mr. Chairwoman. So uh, I uh, ask the uh, AGM uh, to revoke the authorization granted by the AGM of April 27, 2022 to authorize uh, the Board of Directors and on its behalf the Chief Executive Officer with the right to subdelegate to purchase on shares through one or more leading intermediaries appointed by the uh, company for a maximum of 18 months from today's date for an outlay of 500 million euros and up to a maximum limit of shares in portfolio equal to 4.5% of the subscribed and paid up share capital, taking into account the treasury shares held by the company in compliance with the principle of equal treatment and through the use of procedures established by Article 144. Regulations in the manner established by Article 5 of the EU regulation or in the manner established by the uh, market uh, practices permitted by CONSUB pursuant to Article 13 of the EU uh, regulation. Uh, 
And uh, uh, as far as requirements of the buyback program is governed by Article 5 of the EU regulation, should be no more than 5% higher, no more than 5% lower than the reference price recorded on the X market uh, in the session preceding each individual transaction. If the company suggests to support the liquidity of its own shares in accordance with the criteria established by the market practice allowed under Article 80, um, uh, as may be amended or replaced during the term of the authorization, the purchase price shall be established in compliance with the aforementioned admitted market practice to grant the board of directors and on its behalf the CEO with the right to subdelegate all powers necessary to implement the above resolutions. Uh, as far as uh, the uh, sell, sell of uh, own uh, shares are concerned, we will set uh, the uh, criteria uh, for uh, the uh, sale of uh, own shares based on the uh, ways and means set according to the best interest of the uh, company. Such transactions will be uh, carried out either directly or through uh, intermediaries and according to the market practices and this has been uh, must be um, carried out according to to the provisions of law. And then to grant the chief executive officers all the uh, authority necessary to uh, carry out uh, uh, for the successful outcome of uh, uh, what has mentioned earlier. I invite the designated representative to declare if there are any remarks. So I give the floor to the chairman. I move on to the uh, debate of item number four on the agenda. Long-term share incentive plan 2023-2025, relevant and consequent resolutions. I would like to inform you that the information document on the long-term stock incentive plan 2023-25, drafted based on the provisions of Article 114 bis of the TUF and Article 84 bis of the regulations implementing the TUF, uh, has been filed at the registered office and made available to the public on the company's website and at the authorized storage mechanism e-market storage. I would also remind you that it has been sent to all those who have requested it. I ask Professor Marchetti, with the consent of the designated representative, to read the Board of Directors' uh, motion for resolution on item number four of today, AGM, and the completion of the shareholders' intervention through the designated representative. Thank you, Mr. Chairwoman. So, uh, the shareholder meeting of SNAM uh, convened in ordinary session, having acknowledged the uh, motion for resolution of the Board of Directors, uh, resolves to approve, pursuant to and for the purposes of Article 114 bis 2, uh, the long term stock incentive plan 2023 25 under the terms and conditions described in the disclosure document attached to the Board of Directors explanatory report to grant the Board of Directors and on its behalf the Chief Executive Officer uh, the, the power of del subdelegation and any power necessary to fulfill and completely implement the foresaid uh, long-term stock incentive plan 2023 and 2025. With reference to each three-year cycle under the long-term Stock Incentive Plan 2023-25 to allocate the incentive in favor of the SIP Executive Officer to annually draft and approve the regulations of the Long-Term Stock Incentive Plan 2023-25 with reference to each three-year cycle and make such amendments and all additions to the same. Identify the beneficiaries based on the defined criteria. Define any other terms and conditions for the implementation of the Long-Term Incentive Plan 2023-25 to extend the provision of this resolution and uh, uh, the information document attached uh, to uh, the uh, minutes of the meeting, to disclose to the market, to draft and finalize any necessary or appropriate documents in connection with the long-term stock incentive plan 2023-25 pursuant to the applicable laws and regulations. I uh, give the floor to the designated representative. There are no remarks, questions or proposals. Thank you. 
I shall move on to the debate on item number five on the agenda of the AGM, Report on Remuneration Policy and Compensation, paid in 2023. First section, Report on Remuneration Policy, Binding Resolution. Second section, Report on Remuneration Paid, Not Binding Resolution. Uh, pursuant to Article 123 Terror of the TUF and Article 84 Quarter of the issuer's regulations, the Board of Directors of NAMSPA uh, drafted the report on remuneration policy and compensation paid in 2023, which was filed at the company's registered office with Borsa Italiana SPA and published on the company's website on April 4, 2023, and with the authorized storage mechanism in market storage. The vote of the AGM in relation to the five, fifth item of the agenda is binding with reference to the first section and not binding with reference to the second section of the report on remuneration policy and compensation paid in 2023. Uh, in connection with this item on the agenda, to separate uh, uh, voting sessions will be taken on the basis of the following motions. I would like to recall the letter to shareholders uh, in the report describing the main activities carried out by the Nomination and Remuneration Committee during 2022, published uh, according to the law, and I invite Rita Rolli, Chair of the Nomination and Remuneration Committee, to read it out. The speech of the Chair will be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mrs. Chairwoman. Dear shareholders, I'm very pleased to present on behalf of the Nomination and Remuneration Committee and of the Board of Directors the annual report of NAMS Remuneration Policy and Compensation paid. The document aims to explain to all stakeholders the main features of the compensation policy for the year 2023 and the results of its implementation for the year 2022. In 2022, the shareholders' meeting confirmed a high level of approval for SNAM's report, which received broad support from shareholders, 97.2% favorable right, um, votes for Section 1 and 98% for Section 2. The committee has put in place the activities and compensation to define a compensation policy for 2023 ensuring the alignment of the interests of top managers with those of shareholders and other stakeholders, promoting the pursuit of goals of new strategic plan 2022-26 submitted to the market on January 19, 2023. The 2023 compensation policy is generally in line with the previous year. The main changes are the following. The introduction, in line with best uh, practices, of a cap to the severance of the CEO calculated as two annual fixed compensation supplemented by the average of the annual monetary incentive paid in the last three years, including any allowance for lack of notice. The review of the fixed compensation provided to the CEO as part of the remuneration structure in line with the previous one, whose gross annual remuneration for a role of general managers increases from 750 euros of the previous uh, terms to 680,000 euros. The introduction of new objectives goals within the short-term and long-term incentive plans to support the execution of SNAM's strategy um, from the perspective of both gas infrastructure and energy transition, to simultaneously ensure security of supply, sustainability and competitiveness. Uh, the so-called energy trilemma, the annual monor monetary incentive plan 2023 ensures a linkage with both business and sustainability targets. To this end, the committee has submitted to the board uh, the following motion to link a part of the premium to a SNAM strategic project for 2023 to ensure the security of gas supplies in Italy in the light of continuing geopolitical uh, tensions and economic uh, impact on the cost of raw materials. Uh, 
to confirm ESG targets with a weight of 20%, among which a sustainable supply chain matrix was introduced related to the um, tenders that include ESG criteria within scoring models. The new long-term share incentive plan 2023-25 was uh, uh, conceived to uh, direct management toward the achievement of strategic objectives by promoting sustainable value creation in the medium to long term in line with the company's corporate purpose. A new set of targets related to energy transition was introduced with a total weight of 20% to enable the acceleration of the energy transition process. In addition, thanks to the fruitful cooperation of the Environmental, Social and Governance and Energy Transition Scenario Committee, the 20% weight of the ESG objective was confirmed in line with the previous plan characterized by the following, a meet matrix aimed at assessing SNAM's performance in terms of reducing natural gas emission. This is one of the um, central issues of NAM decarbonization strategies, which in 2022 has confirmed its target uh, to reduce natural gas emission by 55% by 2025 versus 2015, uh, higher than recommended by the Oil and Gas Methane Partnership Framework prepared by the UN environmental program to which SNAM has, uh, um, the SNAM has uh, um, adhered. An indicator focused on gender diversity as fair representation in terms of gender diversity in SNAM's management team. To commit SNAM's commitment, I emphasize how the company's focus on diversity and inclusion issues has enabled it to be included for the fourth year in a row in Bloomberg's Gender Equality Index. The report has been revised in terms of content structure and related disclosure, consistent with market best practices for disclosure. The company has also been working on a new layout with the aim of representing the contents in an increasingly clear and usable way for the reader, while maintaining an integrated approach to shareholders' meeting reporting. I trust that the committee's efforts with management and the choices made in continuity with the remuneration policy approved at the last AGM can be understood and appreciated with the support that will be given to the remuneration policy that we have illustrated for 2023. Thank you, Rita. I ask Professor Marchetti to read uh, the proposed resolution of the board uh, on item five and uh, to do um, any operations uh, through the designated representatives. So 5.1 uh, binding resolutions, NAMS uh, uh, AGM had an exam the report on the remuneration policy and compensation paid in 2023 prepared by the company's board under 123 of the TUF article 24 uh, quarter adopted by CONSOB and having examined and discussed in particular the first section of this uh, report uh, containing pursuant to paragraph 3 of article 123 ter an illustration of the company's policy on the remuneration of the members of the board of directors, the chief executive officer and the general manager, the executives with strategic responsibilities and the members of the board of statutory auditors with reference to the financial year 2023 as well as uh, the procedures used for implementing this policy and taking into account that under 3B and 3 ter of 1, 2, 3 ter of TUF, the vote of the AGM on section 1 uh, of the report uh, on remuneration policy and compensation resolves to approve section 1 of the report on remuneration policy and compensation 23 of SNAM prepared uh, according to the law. So I repeat my declaration, 5.2, uh, this is SNAM's AGM, uh, the introduction is the same, so having examined and discussed section 2, it is resolved to vote in favour 
it is a non-binding resolution of Section 2 of the report on remuneration uh, and the compensation paid in 2023 prepared by the company's board of directors uh, pursuant to Article 123 Ter uh, Section 4 of TUF. And I uh, repeat the declaration. This is the designated representative. Uh, having uh, examined and discussed uh, all, and there being no questions on the items of the agenda, I declare close the discussion on the items of the agenda. And I ask Professor Marchetti to move on with the voting relating to the proposals of the board on uh, the items of the agenda of the AGM. Thank you, first of all. We ask if uh, the designated representative has uh, the voting instructions for all of the shares for which a proxy has been given. Uh, the answer is yes, I do. Okay, so we can start uh, with the voting on item one of the agenda uh, accounts. Maybe we could read the percentages on the voting capital and then in the minutes um, there will be the precise number and most especially the names. Okay, thank you. As regards the capital represented in favor, 97.35%, abstaining 0.30% and against 2.35%. No one didn't vote. We are talking about point one. Apologies, I've made a mistake. I repeat the percentages. So in favor, 99.01% of the social capital, abstaining 0.05% of the capital and against 0.94% of the capital. Thank you so much. The proposal is approved by majority. Let's move on with item two. So, all of the instructions have been received. Distribution of the profits, I confirm, in favor, 99.15% of the shares represented, abstaining 0.01% of the represented shares, against 0.84%. No one didn't vote. Thank you. Thank you. So, the proposal is approved by a majority. Let's move on with the same instructions. Item 3 of the agenda, authorization for the purchase and disposal of own shares. In favor, 99.82% of the shares represented, abstaining 0.002% of the shares represented against 0.18%. No one didn't vote. Thank you so much. This proposal has been approved by a majority. So we have come to item four of the agenda for the day, which is uh, the long-term incentive plan 23-25. Over to you. Thank you. In favor, 97.35% of the shares represented, abstaining 0.30% of the shares represented, against 2.35% of the shares represented. Thank you so much. The proposal has been approved by a majority. Let's move on to the two votings on item 5, starting from 5.1, which is uh, the binding resolution on uh, the report on remuneration section 1. On 5.1, in favor, 92.18% of the shares represented, abstaining 0.32% of the shares represented, against 7.50% of the shares represented. No one didn't vote. The proposal has been therefore approved by a majority. We've come to the last voting, 5.2, which is the remuneration policy, section 2. And as such, the resolution is not binding. Okay, in favor, 93.29% of the shares represented, abstaining 0.02% of the shares represented, 
and against 6.69% of the shares represented. No one didn't vote. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, this as well has been approved. And uh, I give you the floor for the closing remarks. Uh, nothing else having to be discussed. This meeting is closed at 11.10 a.m. And I thank you.